We are in uh, Meiji Shrine in Tokyo, the biggest shrine in Tokyo. This is uh, Margo Crossing, uh, a very excellent researcher of the ten lost tribes of Israel along the Silk Road, especially in Northeast uh, India, Mizoram people. Mm -hmm. And also she, she knows very much about uh, Chan Min uh, in China. No, uh, also. Yes. So she, she will uh, talk about uh, the lost tribes of Israel uh, and India mm, later. I will guide to the shrine and explain the connection uh, with uh, ancient Israel. Uh, this is a uh, Tori gate and uh, this gate was originally only two pillars uh, with one rope in the upper side. In ancient Israel, uh, there was uh, two pillars in front of uh, the shrine uh, uh, named Yakin and Boaz. Uh -huh. and, and Joseph Eidelberg, uh, uh, a Jewish researcher of the lost tribes of Israel, interpreted uh, the name Tori'i as the Hebrew Aramaic word for a uh, gate, that is Tara. Kara means gate. So the tour guide that took me uh, to Issei, hmm. the Issei main shrine, hmm. um, it's very much like this. Lots of oh yes, beautiful trees and hmm. um, and she was saying that there was no um, uh, there's no idols, there's no signs, there's no wording uh -huh. or anything. It's just very think very plain, you know, just prayers and I see um, yes. This shrine is uh, uh, is like the tabernacle of Israel, uh -huh. um, because the tabernacle of Israel uh, move was moving around in the desert. Uh -huh. uh, may, they camped uh, at many places, and then then the tabernacle of Israel uh, moved to another place and re, re, restructured. Mm -hmm. So like that, uh, the Issa Shrine moved in the kink area. Mm -hmm. mm. So um, Reverend Hadakita said there was, a, um, there was a passage in Deuteronomy somewhere that talked about the tabernacle mm. being somewhere for 20 years and then... then oh, moved. yes. Which, which passage is that? Do you know yeah, in maybe uh, the Book of Chronicles uh, or just mm -hmm. Hebrew Bible, mm -hmm. Israelites moved uh, the Ark of the Covenant of Israel to another place after 20 years. Yes, I think that was what he was referring to. So that was before uh, the Ark of the Covenant was settled in Jerusalem. Mm. Yes, of course. Mm. Hmm. The, these are sake, uh, Japanese liquor, mm -hmm. and these are uh, bottles of uh, wine from France. Uh, in ancient Israel, uh, always uh, liquor, uh, wine. Uh, th this Japanese uh, liquor is uh, is a rice wine, mm -hmm. and this is a. Uh, uh, grape wine. So, um, in ancient Israel, uh, wine was offered to the temple of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And wine, salt, and bread uh, were, were always offered uh, to the temple of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Rabbi Marvin Takeya said, uh, this is very much like ancient Israel. 
custom. Uh, I will explain the symbol. Uh -huh. You see the golden uh, symbol, crest. That is a chrysanthemum crest. And 16 petals uh, are for one uh, crest. Yeah. And this is a uh, crest uh, very much used in ancient Middle East. Uh -huh. uh, ancient Middle Eastern uh, kings uh, uh, used uh, this, this 16 petals crest to uh, for the authority of kings. So, right. In Egypt, in Israel, and also in Mesopotamia, uh -huh. they used uh, this crest. In Jerusalem, uh, uh, just above the Herod's Gate, uh -huh. you see the similar design uh -huh. uh, of this crest. We uh, researchers think this crest is the mark of the imperial family of Japan. Uh -huh. mm. uh, this came from Middle East. Mm. Uh -huh. Maybe Israelites uh, brought mm. Mm. This shrine is, uh, was built uh, in the memory of the Emperor Meiji. Uh, Meiji Emperor was a great man who imported Western civil civilization mm -hmm. into Japan. Mm -hmm. Before that, uh, Japan was isolated uh, about 300 years uh, from other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but he opened uh, Japan into the world mm -hmm. and it's imported our civilization and also, but he kept uh, Japanese civilization uh, in spiritually, mm -hmm. but uh, materially he imported uh, Western civilization. Mm -hmm. um, this is a usual uh, Tori gate mm -hmm. uh, with two pillars and one uh, connecting upper side. Uh, but uh, there is another Tori gate. Uh, it, it is not actually a gate, uh, but a symbol uh, of, of the Trinity of God. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that is, uh, call, we call Mihashira Torii, that means uh, Torii with three pillars, three legs. And we see, if we see from upper side, uh, we see triangle um, and three uh, pillars. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is uh, the symbol of the Trinity of God, mm -hmm. um, which is described in Kojiki, the ancient uh, chronicle uh, book written in 8th century CE. Mm -hmm. um, there are three gods mm -hmm. uh, appeared. Mm. And the Hata clan believed uh, the three gods were uh, in the trinity of God. We think that it was brought by the Hata clan who came to Japan uh, about 1700 years ago, uh, three or four centuries CE. When I was talking to Reverend Hadakita mm. a few days ago in Kyoto, he, he actually used um, the Japanese names for the, the God at the center of all things. The, can you just mention what the Japanese mm. words are for describing those three gods? Ah, the first god is Ame no Minakanushi, that means uh, the Lord uh, who sits at the center of heaven. Uh -huh. The second uh, major god is called Takami Musuhi. I, we think it's a Hebrew name. And the third god is Kami Musuhi. Uh -huh. And the uh, Mihashira Tori, the Tori gate uh, with three pillars, oh. uh, represents the tr trinity of oh. these three gods. That's why we think that uh, Hata clan, you know, who came to Japan in, in ancient Japan, was an Israelite uh -huh. who converted, uh, in, converted to Christianity. Uh -huh. Uh, when they were in 
China or Central Asia. Mm -hmm. In Central Asia, uh, in the second century C, mm -hmm. uh, most of the countries uh, were Christianized mm -hmm. uh, already. Uh -huh. So, uh, and also Israelites also lived there. Uh -huh. And the Hatta clan Israelites, uh, a part of the Hatta Israelite, Israelites, mm -hmm. uh, converted into Christianity. And she brought Christianity into Japan uh, in the third or fourth century. Mm. So um, there's been some findings in um, uh, Kyrgyzstan uh, in, in Lake Issaquil mm. uh, where they've been able to find an ancient Christian church under the water. Oh, oh. And the, it seems to be the church of St. Matthew. Oh, St. Matthew. Mm. Wow. <laughs> it's interesting. Mm. Wow. But of course, you know that there's many um, um, connections between the Japanese oh. and the people in Kyrgyzstan. Oh, yes. Uh, there is uh, those uh, Kyrgyzstan people and the Japanese people have the same legend. Uh -huh. uh, in ancient uh, times, uh, there were uh, two brothers, uh -huh. and one brother uh, liked fish uh -huh. and went to uh, in the east and became the Japanese uh -huh. and one brother liked uh, meat and went to the west uh -huh. and became the Kyrgyzstan people. The same legend, uh, we have the same legend called uh, Yamasa Chishko and uh, Umisa Chishko. Umisa Chishko means uh, uh, sea happiness. Uh -huh. And Yamasa Chishko means uh, mountain happiness. Uh -huh. uh, so they uh, they were brothers. Uh -huh. So if we uh, Japanese go visit uh, Kyrgyzstan, uh, Kyrgyzstan people say, "Oh, uh, the Japanese man, we are brothers." Uh -huh. So may maybe Kyrgyzstan people and J the Japanese people are connected in some place. Mm. And uh, maybe if the Kyrgyzstan people, um, the tribal Manasseh, Ma Manasseh's brother was Ephraim. Mm -hmm. So I believe the Ephraim tribe came to Japan ah. mm, because the genealogy of the imperial family of Japan is very much like the genealogy of Ephraim mentioned in the Book of Chronicle. The structure and the conditions are very much uh, similar to each other. Names are different, but the conditions and uh, structures are uh, very similar mm -hmm. beyond coincidence. I believe that Ephraim came to Japan mm -hmm. and became the imperial family of Japan. And also Professor Avigdor Shahan uh -huh. sometimes came to Japan. I met him and she has a lecture meeting in, uh, in Japan before the several hundred audience. Uh -huh. And she opened his mouth and spoke uh, loudly uh, at the beginning of his speech. Uh -huh. uh, everybody uh, the persons of Ephraim. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, he, uh, <laughs> he believes that uh, Ephraim people came to Japan. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Omeidani 
この会は十部族の指導者であったエフライム族の子孫の皆様とそしてユダ族ベニヤ民族レビ族の代表である私たちとが3000年の時を経て一堂に会した記念すべき会であります私はこの素晴らしいホールにおいて目を解きますと神の臨在でありますシェキナーの翼の音が聞こえてくるように感じます So if this, like this sort of, do you see this as sort of like an outer court? These, where the... Um... Yeah, this is outer court. Okay. And everybody can enter in this outer court. Mm -hmm. and, and also there is a holy place mm -hmm. and only permitted people can enter. Mm -hmm. And at the uh, Holy of Holies, mm -hmm. only the high priest of this shrine can enter. Mm -hmm. That is the same as the structure of the ancient Jerusalem temple mm -hmm. and also Moses' tabernacle of Israel. Mm -hmm. And also in the Holy of Holies, uh, there is no idol. Mm -hmm. uh, there, only there are symbols uh, like sword or mirror or something. Zigzag mm -hmm. white paper, mm -hmm. uh, but these are not idols. Mm -hmm. But uh, these are symbols to show that they, this is the sacred place, who where invisible God mm -hmm. comes down. Mm -hmm. Like uh, in ancient Israel, uh, there was. Uh, In the Holy of Holies of the Tabernacle of Israel, mm -hmm. there was uh, the Ark of the Covenant of Israel. Mm -hmm. And in the Ark, there was Aaron's uh, stick mm -hmm. and also a jar of manna mm -hmm. and the uh, stone tablets of mm -hmm. the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. But these were not idle, mm -hmm. just to show that this was the sacred place mm -hmm. where invisible God comes down. It's interesting because um, when we were looking at the, the baptismal pool the other day in, in Kyoto, mm. um, um, it was the white paper, the white zigzag oh, paper. Yeah. That Maybe that, that is, uh, I, pers I personally think that it, it was a symbol of my funders at Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. And there was... Uh, in the Bible, it, it is written that around uh, Mount Sinai, there was a boundary, uh -huh. a boundary uh -huh. that was that people cannot enter into Mount Sinai. Uh -huh. And the Bible does not mention you know, what kind of boundary, but maybe it was, perhaps it was a roof with uh, something. Mm. Uh, so... Uh, you see, uh, in the Japanese Shinto shrine, uh, there are there are ropes with zigzag white papers. Uh, maybe zigzag white papers mm -hmm. uh, are uh, thunders of Mount Sinai, mm -hmm. and the rope is a boundary um, of the sacred and uh, the, the plan. Yeah, yeah. The um, the people in. Um, Mm, the what we call the Chiang Min in uh, southwest China. Oh. Um, uh, I think their their own name is Irma, um, which means people Irma E R M A. Oh, means it actually means the sons of sheep. Sons of sheep. Yeah. Oh, I and uh, but um, um, they actually um, represented God by white pieces sheets of paper. So. So the Chinese thought they were worshipping the white sheets of paper, but they actually weren't. The, it was just a representation of the God above, and, and they had it because white represented holiness. And so they would, you know, they had these white pieces of paper like, oh, really? like you do here. Yeah. Oh, really? Hmm. That's interesting. Hmm. This is a lever. Uh, to wash your hands and mouth. When I uh, eat, uh, guided Rabbi Andy Afman Bifail and his staff members here, they uh, used this laser to 
uh, cleaning up uh, their hands. In ancient Israel, there was also a labor to clean priests' uh, uh, body and also hands Ooh. in everything. True. Yeah. Cool. They are selling amulet uh -huh. uh, for fortune. Uh -huh. When I uh, guided Miss Paula, she's a pastor uh -huh. for President Trump. Uh -huh. Uh, of America, of the United States, uh -huh. and the, after Trump was uh, became became the president of the United States, mm -hmm. she visited Japan. Mm -hmm. I guided her, and she bought an amulet. Uh -huh. In in Jewish temple, there was no maybe amulets, but Rabbi permits the selling amulets, mm -hmm. uh, and I thought Jewish. Jewish people use amulet. Well, uh, and uh, and uh, and um, uh, Sharon probably knows better than I do. Mm. But the uh, the Hasidic Jews uh, back in Romania, mm. I think they started uh, amulets for healing and different things. Oh, really? Like that. I remember um, listening to um, um, a, a, a lecture by Abraham. Rabbi Abraham Fields, and he talked about Hasidic Jews of Romania and amulets and oh, I see. things like that. So, mm. uh, Professor think... Abigdor Shaha also gave me a, a kind of amulet. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but I think it's a very, I think it's a, in in Jewish history. I think it's only a few hundred years old. I don't oh. think it's, I don't think it's that old. Oh, yeah. oh yes. When Rabbi uh, Andy Aflavi uh, came to this shrine, mm -hmm. and after, uh, when we go back to his hotel, uh, uh, Hebrew interpreter uh, was uh, talking with Rabbi Elia for mm -hmm. And I asked the Hebrew interpreter what uh, the rabbi said to her. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, the rabbi was talking about uh, this shrine mm -hmm. and she said, in ancient Israel, mm -hmm. uh, the Jerusalem temple was in the similar atmosphere of this shrine. Mm. So this is outer court, and everybody can enter. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the holy place mm -hmm. that, all, that where only permitted uh, people can enter. Mm -hmm. And uh, beyond the uh, steps, Mm -hmm. uh, beyond the steps, and there is the Holy of Holies, mm -hmm. where uh, only high priests uh, can enter. Mm -hmm. And this place is an outer court mm -hmm. and where everybody can enter. Mm -hmm. So this uh, structure is the same as the Jerusalem Temple mm -hmm. and also Moses' tabernacle of Israel. Mm -hmm. So there's, di three, there's different entrances here to the... Mm. Oh, there's different entrances. Oh, different entrances. Oh. Yeah. In ancient Israel, also, uh, there were several, maybe 12 oh. uh, gates mm. uh, for the temple. Mm. Mm. I think there's still 12 gates around the old city of Jerusalem today, isn't there? Oh, really? I think there is. In ancient Israel, uh, in Jerusalem temple, mm -hmm. and there were 12 steps between the holy place and the holy of holies. The archaeological uh, scholar uh, wrote a soul in his book. Mm -hmm. This is an uh, emma plate mm -hmm. uh, where uh, one which uh, people write a uh, prayer to God. Mm -hmm. uh, but now this emma uh, on in front of the Emma, and this is 
uh, 16, cru 16 petals crest mm -hmm. and also another design. Uh -huh. But it, it usually uh, the formal e uh, Emma uh, has uh, the design of force. Uh, Emma means uh, the picture of force. Mm -hmm. And in ancient Japan, uh, or there was a custom to dedicate a horse to the sun goddess. Mm -hmm. mm. And it, it, you went to uh, Ise? Yes, and I saw the whiteboard mm. yeah. at, at, as we were leaving um, the temple grounds. Yes, you, you saw a horse. Mm, I did. That was a horse and, uh, dedicated to the sun goddess mm -hmm. uh, by the imperial family mm -hmm. of Japan. And Joseph Eidelberg, a Jewish researcher, says uh, in, uh, he wrote in his book that uh, in ancient uh, Israel, mm -hmm. there was a custom to dedicate a horse to the sun, God, the sun deity. Uh, it was a pagan custom, mm -hmm. but uh, Israeli kings uh, dedicated that horse to some deity. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, abandoned by King, maybe King, King Joshua, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think. The son, yeah. Mm. Uh, but uh, ancient uh, lost tribes of Israel oh. uh, seem to, ha to have that custom oh. mm, and brought uh, the custom into Japan. Mm. Uh, this is a uh, remnant of the uh, custom mm. dedicating uh, force to sun god deity. Emma, votive tablets for special personal prayers and the gratitude towards the de deities in yeah. enshrined in Meiji Jingu. But this Japanese uh, exploration mean, uh, says that they offered a um, uh, horse to Shrine. Horse. Horse. So when I see this, I mm. Mm. that uh, what I think of is that uh, all the people going today to the Western Wall in Jerusalem and mm. writing their prayers on, oh. on a piece of paper and, oh. you know, they sort of roll it up and fold it and they put it oh. between the cracks of the walls and I've done that myself. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Okay, especially for today, I've worn a um, miso fabric. Some of this is made m more so for, for mm. today's wearing, but um, oh. the, um, the fabric design itself is, this is the most traditional mm. design. Mm. It's called, the design itself is called the Huanze, mm. which um, is their special one. The bag itself has the same mm. fabric design. And this is the design um, that the princesses would have worn. Mm. Uh, they would have, it would have been a wraparound um, piece of fabric. And most of the women would still wear a wraparound piece of fabric, as do the men. The men fabric's slightly shorter, it's usually folded to the knee. Oh. Um, but the women wear it to the ankle. Oh. Uh, and this, uh, this material uh, is always worn at weddings. So the bride, the bride would wear this um, this uh, design of fabric mm. to the wedding. But every clan in in Mizoram mm. and in the in the northeast would actually have its own uh, design. So it's a little bit, and you see that through um, through the Karen as well mm. and uh, the Laku. But particularly in the Mizos, it's every clan has its own design. I see. Um, so the Irish Irish and the um, Scottish also have um, this sort of tartan for their clans. Mm. And the, um, you know, the, the Celts have a very strong Israelite mm. um, history as well. So, mm. you know, uh, and many people in, in, in West have been studying that history. But it's very interesting that in the Northeast of India, they have exactly the same um, um, you know, pattern for every single clan is a different pattern, and it could even come from um, Joseph. You know, oh. Joseph's every every uh, every brother had a a tartan or a, or a piece of fabric that represented himself, 
Um, but Joseph's tartan had many colours. So that's yeah. the uh, that's possibly um, uh, an origin of all these different um, Israelite um, plans having their own particular version of their own design. So, but this is the this is the most beautiful one in in Mizoram. So.